this magazine is now in its 40th year of publication. I suppose that at this point I could or should just stop talking. Referee has done its talking through its pages. The words and the graphics we have selected and presented over the years are the record of our accomplishment and of our shortcoming. Only readers like you can fairly judge our body of work that we have been continuously publishing for 471 months is a testament to our readers. In the beginning was the word, and that word was referee. It was April 1975. It was a simple idea. Create a magazine for sports officials. Within a few months, another simple idea. Create a national association of sports officials, cutting across sports and levels. Provide to members a range of benefits to make their officiating more fulfilling, secure, and safe. These two simple ideas have borne such far-reaching consequences. Referee Magazine and the National Association of Sports Officials, known as NASO, have helped all in officiating feel in touch, in sync, and included. At a milestone such as this, please allow me to briefly reminisce. Two nights ago, my wife and I took Mary Law to dinner. Mary is the widow of Bill Law, who was one of the founding shareholders of Referee. Bill died in 2003. I had met Bill when I was a college economics undergraduate in the early 70s. We stayed in touch as I went to graduate school and then into the workforce. After three years in big corporate America, I decided I wanted a different experience. I wanted to start a magazine for sports officials. Officiating had been in the Mano household my entire life, so that primed my pump. One night, shortly after I left my corporate job, I was speaking with Bill on the phone. He asked me what I planned to do next. I somewhat quietly said I intended to start a magazine for sports officials. Bill asked me to tell him about the concept, and I did. It took about a minute. In the second minute, Bill Law said that he would like to invest in it. I demurred saying it was a very risky proposition. And then he said something that has always stayed with me. Bill said, that's okay. If you're involved in it, I would like to be involved in it. For a youngish punk with few marks on the wall, that was breathtaking. When I got off the phone, I told my wife what Bill had said. I couldn't figure out why he felt that way, but he did. Months later, we pulled an investor group together and Bill became our second largest shareholder. His belief, his capital, his trust played a major role in enabling us to weather startup horrors, blood red balance sheets, and stomach churning setbacks. I told Mary that story, and she smiled. I had one more story to share with her. We were about 18 months into the project and losing money fast and furiously. A meeting of our six shareholders was called. We had to figure out if we were going to pull the plug on referee or push more chips into the center of the table. The meeting was in Milwaukee and I remember it like it was yesterday. Attorney Bill Colby, who was and still is a shareholder, had run the numbers for us. We needed a goodly slug of capital. Bill Law had the largest pie slice held by our shareholder group, not including me. Bill Colby was on my right. Bill Law was on my left reading the day's Wall Street Journal with his half glasses perched on the end of his nose. Colby informs Law that if we are to move forward, and if he intends to protect his proportionate share, he would have to put in large numbers of dollars. Looking over his half glasses, Mr. Law simply turns to his right and says, I'll do that, and goes back to reading. Mary looked at me across our dinner table with a slight smile and a knowing nod. That sounds like Bill, she said. We had breathing room. We survived. I wish he had to see what he helped create for all of us. Thank you.